Visit my fabulous sponsor, Ka Gold Jewelry, link in the description below. Hello, fabulous friends, fans, and superstars. Welcome to your horoscope for the week of October 27, 2019. I am your astrologer, Nadia Shaw. Thank you for being here. What an amazing week it is. We have an active and fabulous sky playing out for us right now. And this week, if I had to pick an overall theme, I would say it is hurry up and wait. That encapsulates it perfectly. We have an electrifying, uh, energizing new moon that is happening early in the week. And that brings with it very quick activity and a rush of energy as well. Now, this new moon will be happening in the sign of Scorpio, and it is standing across the sky from Uranus with precision. Now, when it is that a conversation, what astrologers call an aspect, is happening with precision, it is considered especially strong. It was earlier today, I was teaching with Synchronicity University, and I was explaining how to determine the strength of a planet, the strength of a placement. And a lot of it does come down to how precise some of those conversations can be. Well, it is Uranus standing across the sky from the new moon, from the sun, with such exactness that we can't help but feel that Uranian energy magnified that much more personally. With the new moon, there is an emotional connection to what is happening. And whenever a planet is an aspect to an important lunar event, we integrate the energy, the core energy of that planet that much more on an emotional level. When we have an energy of such precision, it is a wake up call. There is an epiphany that all of us are having in at least one area of life that can change our circumstances, in some cases dramatically so. But here's the thing, here's the wait part, because that's the hurry up part, right? With Uranus, things move very quickly, we leap into the future. But it is going to be later in the week, right around Thursday, is when Mercury will go retrograde in the same sign, in the sign of Scorpio. Now it is going to be Mercury going retrograde while hand in hand with Venus. And that brings with it that much more of a relaxed pose, <laughs> to put it one way. Because Mercury retrograde in and of itself invites us to go within, to slow down, to reflect, to go back over old ground. And it is that connection with Venus that will bring that much more heart, and that much more faith into that process and into that journey. Mercury is going to be retrograde for the first three weeks of November, going retrograde on Halloween. Now that in and of itself is a powerful symbolism. And it is going to be Mercury that will come back to where he is this week, right around December 8. That is when the Mercury retrograde season will be over. And so this marks an important moment as part of the larger Mercury retrograde season. But let's come back to Halloween because Halloween in and of itself, of course, does not necessarily have astrological significance. It is in the season of Scorpio always every year. And it is sort of internationally around the world uh, recognized as a time of honoring the ancestors in some way or another, even though in some parts of the world, like in North America, it's uh, become partly also uh, a fun holiday that you do. Uh, you dress up in costumes. I always love dressing up in costumes. You can always see my Halloween costume on my Instagram account. But there's a deeper significance to it always. And it is essentially accessing the range of Scorpion energy. Uh, on the one hand, being able to transform, to become something else especially when it is that you're willing to go within and come back on the other side, uh, that is when we are truly transformed. And those costumes become symbolic of that transformation. But it is also, of course, the honoring of the ancestors, the honoring of spiritual energy that is acknowledged to be especially uh, available to us at this time, that wisdom of the ancestors that is something strongly associated with the energy of Scorpio as well. Now we have Mercury here. Mercury is mind. 
It is a deepening understanding on a level of intellect. And it is ultimately what happens on a level of intellect that raises the energy that otherwise could be deeply emotional, what some people would consider stuck in the lower chakras. That's one way to put it. Scorpion energy in and of itself can be so feeling oriented, but you add the element of mind and we are invited to bring focus to our thoughts. And we are invited to use our thoughts to examine what we feel that much more deeply. Well, it is the new moon that accelerates this process that much more, that brings uh, awe and surprise to this journey of uncovering our own truth, to uncover what it means to be authentically ourselves, what needs to heal within us if we're truly gonna step into our truth more fully in at least one area of life. This new moon is gonna invite us to do just that. But it's not like, we have this epiphany and that's it, we're on a brand new chapter. It may feel like a brand new chapter and in many ways it will be. Every new moon brings us that opportunity to begin again. But it is the Mercury retrograde that is going to ensure that we are honest with ourselves in the process to make sure that our beginning isn't just performance because we're afraid to look at something deeper. It is the Mercury retrograde that is going to ask us to ensure that we integrate the changes on deeper levels of mind and of soul as well. It is the Mercury retrograde that's going to ask us to look at how it is that our wounds, the things that are hard to look at within us, that we'd rather not look at, have been part of what has shaped us today and help us to truly detach in a healthy way so that we can transform it. It is scorpion energy that is the alchemical process that I talk about from time to time. It is a powerful symbolism of turning lead into gold. And that is what Scorpio season invites us to do. But a heightened scorpion season like this, on the one hand, will accelerate that process to an instant, where it's not necessarily about the diligent, slow sense of transformation that the sign can represent, but that clarity that can change things in an instant with that new moon. But that new moon with Uranus won't save us from the diligent process, won't save us from having to look within, having to look at deeper layers and deeper levels of ourselves. And so as part of this with Halloween, uh, being the day that Mercury goes retrograde, I do feel that there are going to be a lot of people out there in different parts of the world uh, where over the course of this Halloween season, you may find yourself reuniting with people where you get that opportunity to look more deeply within. You get that opportunity to examine something within yourself, the things that hurt you, the things that shaped you. The things that maybe you thought of as lead in your life and in your past, and now here it is. A synchronistic moment, a moment that your soul is ready for, a karmic alignment bringing you in contact with somebody who ultimately can now serve as a catalyst towards your gold, a catalyst towards turning that lead and recognizing it for what it is, a source of great wealth a source of great strength, a source of great beauty even as well. And I think that's what Mercury meeting Venus in the sky as Mercury goes retrograde is part of what that represents, that sense of being able to see the beautiful in what previously we didn't want to look at in ourselves, what we previously rejected within ourselves. We'll now get to see it with heart. And in this way, bringing heart and mind together can truly meaningful and profound change take place. The type that stays with us long after Halloween is over and long after this Mercury retrograde season is over as well. That new moon serves as the jumping off point. It's a springboard, if you will. And there may be a moment where we don't really realize where it is that we are springing to until we realize that the journey is within, that we are ultimately being asked to change in ways very quickly, very surprisingly. In some cases, uh, the change comes about 
through a moment that is exciting, that is exhilarating, that feels lucky. But for others, it may be a moment that is uncomfortable, that ultimately provides that springboard to the deeper contemplation and the deeper transformation. When you change something from the inside out, it is changed forever. When change becomes a performance, it is just a mask that keeps you from doing that work. And I do believe that it is that work that we are here to do, that we're meant to do, because it is through that work that is emotional, that is spiritual, through that work of healing that ultimately we find ourselves on that journey towards the further embodiment of love and wisdom. And in this way, the energy of Scorpio, you know, it gets a bad rap. I will say that, but I think every energy out there, it has a way of expression that can be its higher vibration and a way of expression that maybe is not as enlightened, is not as conscious. But when Scorpion energy is accessed at its very best, it is able to create space for whatever has been. It is able to find acceptance for whatever has been and still be able to see the beautiful in it. To be able to take what other people reject, what other people think is not even worthy of consideration, what is cast aside as taboo or ugly or forbidden, it is the scorpion energy that finds beauty in that very thing that has been cast aside. It is scorpion energy that finds beauty in truth. And truth isn't about the superficial. It isn't about the masks we wear, the performances that we put on. It goes deeper. It becomes more meaningful. And so all of us in at least one area of life are going to be asked to take on this journey. We're going to be asked to be more honest with ourselves and in that journey of honesty to find a more authentic self in the process. And as much as we'd like it to be one instant and that's it, we're changed. We're free from the past. It doesn't matter anymore. We're propelled into the future. That is really missing an incredible opportunity. It is missing the wisdom of the past. We don't want the past to have control over us, of course because we don't have any power over the past. But what we can do is seek wisdom in the past because then we use it. We bring it forward in a way that acknowledges that there is something there, some gift, some beauty in the pain of the past that we can now carry forward with great pride, with great love. We can allow that very thing that we didn't want to look at before to now become a part of our spiritual wealth, our emotional wealth, a part of our journey towards that full embodiment of love and wisdom. And so it is going to be a journey. We can't escape that, that particular process, but what we can have is a moment of clarity now with this new moon. And it may just be a moment, but it's enough where all the dynamics of what was and which way we're going and, and, and how the energy is unfolding, it becomes crystal clear in a split second. And it is in that clarity that we get to decide, are we going to finally do the work? Are we going to do the work that self-honesty requires? Because it is hard work, but the rewards are immense. The rewards are great. So I spoke earlier today, I taught a class with Synchronicity University. Thank you to all my students who were there. And we talked about, it was Astrological Magic Part 3, and we were talking about the layers of manifestation, right? So we talked about how one of the philosophical understandings to magic is that everything begins on levels of energy, on levels of spirit, and then become emotion. And then from spirit and emotion come mind and thought and intellect. And from there, the ultimate place of manifestation is the physical realm, the earthly realm. And so one of the philosophical assertions, the quiet philosophical assertions of magical practice is that you're working on levels of energy and emotion. You are focusing the mind 
to align with the power of emotion, but really summoning the depths of spirit and directing it so that that energy of spirit and emotion is so strong that the mind and the intellect becomes a wand and from there manifestation must happen. It is a way of pushing forward the energy so that it changes our physical reality and our circumstances in our lives. And we spoke about how important Scorpio energy is, the eighth house, which has a natural correspondence to Scorpion energy, has a strong association with occult practice. And occult practice, essentially, when you think about the law of attraction, the law of attraction is rooted in occult philosophy. The law of attraction says we can take emotion and mind especially and channel that towards physical manifestation. It is a cult practice that is at the root that also incorporates spirit into the equation to change our physical reality, to change our circumstances. And I do believe that scorpion energy encapsulates this perfectly. It's about working with things on a level of emotion, on a level of spirit, consciously. The eighth house, scorpion energy, it can be very private, right? It's a very private energy, but it's the secrets we know we have. It represents the things that we are conscious of, but we don't feel like we can share it with everybody. Maybe we feel vulnerable in sharing it. But there's still a measure of consciousness here that we don't see necessarily always with some of the other signs. And it is when scorpion energy is conscious that it is pure power, the kind of power that ancient and more modern occult practitioners have worked tirelessly to cultivate, to get really good at. But it ultimately comes down to harnessing the power of spirit and emotion and focusing it so powerfully and so precisely that it must manifest into our physical reality. And so on the one hand, this is an energy that can be directed, right? And we'll be invited to direct this energy in some way. But there's also a, an interesting juxtaposition here where it is also about surrender. It's about trusting the journey, trusting the process, being willing to go to those places where we know we have to go when it's hard to look at the lead, but being willing to look at it because we know on the other side is gold. All of us are going to be invited to tap into this very deep and profound power and use it to our advantage, yes, but to the advantage of others as well. Now, also this week, we are going to have Venus changing signs at the end of the week. Venus will move into the sign of Sagittarius and I think that this is very important for one main reason, and that is this happens right as November begins, and November is the last full month that Jupiter will be in the sign of Sagittarius. It will be in the month of December that Jupiter will move on, changing signs, starting setting up the triple conjunction that is set to take place that everybody's talking about in January of 2020 and beyond. But at least for now, and bringing it back to this week, and bringing it back to this day, it is going to be Venus that provides kind of a cherry on top that ends up being a way in which we're able to tie up loose ends and bring forward our blessings, bring heart to our growth and our expansion and our optimism. Venus has been understood as a lower benefic, meaning a blessing, but not as strong a blessing as Jupiter, which is considered a higher benefic. So both of these planets, they represent blessings, especially as they change signs, as they move on. It is ultimately blessings showing up in a different area of life. So imagine the higher benefic and the lower benefic are both in the same part of the sky. Well, this is blessings magnified in at least one area of life for a lot of us out there. So this can be a really good time to re-watch your Jupiter special horoscope, 
for Jupiter moving through Sagittarius. And I'll try to link to that somewhere because it is on YouTube. You can have a look at that. That process, that journey will be highlighted with that much more love, that much more blessings now and in the weeks ahead. But at least for now and for right now, as Venus moves into the sign of Sagittarius, it brings with it a love of what is different, what has been foreign, what maybe we haven't known as much of before, but now we can see the beauty in it. Being willing to bring love to the other, being willing to bring an appreciation, a gentleness, a kindness to those who are different from what we have known before and whom it is that we have known before. Venus moving into the sign of Sagittarius can also bring a love of philosophy, a love of travel, and it is international love that can call us, especially strongly now and in the weeks ahead. What I love about this week for us, well, look, there's a lot here. I know I just touched on Venus because I do think the scorpion energy is especially strong now, but it's also especially meaningful to us. With Uranus speaking with this new moon, it can also provide us with the healthy detachment that we need from what otherwise could be very strong emotion. The point of becoming more conscious is that it helps us to make choices more clearly make choices rooted in a place of intention to align with love and wisdom. And it is now that this new moon is gonna help us to do all this and so much more. It's gonna get us in touch with our truth and the barriers to it. And in the process, we will be invited to make a choice, to put on a mask and perform individuality or to embrace authenticity. Now, regardless of what we choose, the Mercury retrograde will help ensure that we're being honest with ourselves in the process and that the changes last. Well, thank you so much for watching. What do you love about this week? Let me know in the comments below. I love reading you guys. And of course, if you want to know how all this wonderful stuff this week speaks to you and your sign, log on to NadiaShaw.com. Sign up to be one of my superstars. Superstars get expanded exclusive video scopes each and every week, unlimited access to special horoscopes, online live events with me every month for the new moon, and so much more. All of this in the superstar space. I look forward to meeting you there. Now I mentioned earlier with Synchronicity University, thank you to my students. I love you guys. I appreciate you guys so very much. Thank you so much for joining me online. And we are going to have, well, we just had earlier today, Astrological Magic Part 3. Uh, and it is going to be next week that we are going to look at Pluto in the astrology chart. Pluto in the signs and houses. And so if you want to know how Pluto is speaking in your natal chart, that's what we will be exploring in this class and I hope that you will join us and I hope that you absolutely love it as well. And so all the links to sign up, the previous classes we've already had, you can uh, download them, get the instant downloads, you can sign up to join me live uh, or again catch the replay, get the download to learn from uh, forever. All of that and the links are in the description below. I look forward to meeting you in class. My book, The Body and the Cosmos, it's somewhere here. I literally have 300 copies ready to be shipped out. They're going to be shipped out, uh, all of them this week. I've already started shipping some out. It's very exciting, The Body and the Cosmos. Uh, I'll put a picture up here, of course. And advanced copies, that's already done. So that's being shipped out. But you can pre-order on Amazon. It is only the ebook that is available for pre-order. And how that works is... You pre-order through Amazon, Amazon takes your order, uh, the book launches on December 9, and then you will automatically be sent the copy. All of that happens through Amazon. However, when you pre-order, you do get a receipt. And if you forward us the receipt, if you use the contact form on my website, you get in touch with us, you forward us the receipt, what will happen is on launch day, on December 9, you will get audio downloads of the meditations that are in the book. So the book has 12 meditations 
They're all rooted in uh, the signs, each sign of the zodiac, and they're connecting to different parts of the body and the spiritual significance of that part of the body. Well, it is going to be these uh, audio downloads that are guided meditation. So I take you through them. There's music in the background and everything. So you get that as a free gift if you pre-order. But again, you have to forward us the receipt. I have no idea who's pre-ordering. Amazon has that information. I don't know. But I would love to share those meditations as a free gift. So you have to pre-order before December 8th in order to qualify. And then the free gift goes out on December 9th. December 9th is also when the hard copy is going to be more widely available and it'll be available wherever you find books. You'll be able to find it everywhere. Uh, and I hope that you absolutely love that. You can order that online, different websites and all of that and I hope that you enjoy it. It very much has been a labor of love and joy and fulfillment and thank you so much. The first people are already starting to receive the book and there's so many lovely uh, feedbacks that are taking place and I appreciate it so much. So thank you and I hope you absolutely love it, the body and the cosmos. And I'm going to have a book launch party and a live event, lots of live events coming up in 2020. My book launch party is going to take place in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, and it's happening in the morning on Saturday, January 11, I wanna say, it's up here somewhere. But Saturday, January 11 in the morning, I will try and bring cupcakes. It's free to attend. I will have books on hand. Uh, I will do something to acknowledge that this is a pretty cool thing. Maybe give a little speech, have cupcakes. Maybe there's a candle, maybe not, but we'll do something special. Uh, and those of you who want to join me, as I said, it's absolutely free to attend. I'll be there taking selfies and all of that. Uh, and I think it could be so much fun for us to enjoy that together. So it's taking place in Florida. If you are in Florida, please do come out. I would absolutely love to meet you. At 10.30 is when uh, the official uh, workshops and lectures begin. The first morning lecture that I'm doing with the NCGR group in South Florida is on uh, From Earth to Air, the 2020. So we'll be talking about that. And in the afternoon, there is a workshop, Past Lives in the Astrology chart as well. So if you want to stay and learn, that's amazing. If you just want to come and have a cupcake and a selfie, that's amazing too. You'd be very welcome to join. And of course, immediately after that, January 12, I will be getting on a cruise and we'll be off sailing uh, for once in a lifetime. A love, joy, hope, and transformation event that we all will be sharing together. I am one of many speakers who is participating in this event. I'm there, yes, I'm teaching, but I'm also a participant. I will be walking the journey with you. And it is meant to be uh, one of these experiences that stays with you long after it is over. It is meant to help facilitate powerful transformation that is going to be in the air we will be sailing under the light of the Pluto-Saturn conjunction. It is that powerful a time. And we will be working on ourselves, working on our own transformation and taking that back to our communities, to our sphere of influence. I am really very excited about it. The cruise will have stops in Mexico and in the Bahamas as well. So I'll be doing different things as part of this event, as will other speakers as well. Um, you can do a last minute sign up right about now. Uh, and so you can learn a lot more about that. Links are in the description below. We've got over 60 people who are joining online with this event, not online, on board with this event in real time, not just online in the uh, internet space. Although that's a lot of fun too. I do that with Synchronicity University, but it's always really nice to meet people in person as well and especially to meet people who are drawn together as part of the perfect tapestry to share this experience, but also have a lot of fun. <laughs> this cruise, I've never been on a cruise before, so I've been watching videos and participating in the Facebook group online, uh, and it looks like it's going to be so much fun. So we'll be sharing this experience together. You'll be with like-minded people. There'll be lots of time for you to do all the other things that you wanna do that cruise ships have but also to spend time together uh, to be part of each other's journey as well. So information about the cruise is in the description below. I've got lots of other live events coming up in 2020 as well. In March, I will be in Istanbul, 
in May. I will be in Toronto. I'm looking forward to being back in Toronto, my hometown, and Seattle as well with the Norwalk Conference. I'll be in Colorado with the ESAR Conference in September and lots of other events that I will be announcing soon. So all of that we've got to look forward to. Uh, and I hope to meet people and get hugs out there uh, in real life and in real time. It's always amazing to share energy and to share space with you. And I thank you. Thank you so much for seeing me as some part of your sacred journey, whether it is here online with my weekly webcast, the horoscopes on YouTube, whether it's in the superstar space or through Synchronicity University online or in person. I'm truly so grateful for it. And thank you. Thank you again for watching. It'll be a great week. Enjoy.